Jonah can draw stars from the sky. He lives in Mechanosis, a city inside a clock, feared and venerated. The people call the great clock the Omega Meter. Upon birth, each citizen is blessed with a gift, a device, taking backwards to the moment of their inevitable end within. Their clock announces the beginning of their forever in a timeless bliss without resting atop the face in the land known as death. At night, Jonah lies in bed, humming the walls translucent, awakening to silence, stretching to join the end to the beginning. He watches himself asleep, tucks himself in, and thinks good night, then flies away to catch them, the stars. Upon Jonah's return, his stars becomes his own. And he loves each one. He gives his stars the power to reset fear and loneliness. So he hides them in secret places. But his most favorite star, he keeps with him always. The kind of star that will end all time. Rose, you needn't write me a letter. You may simply speak, and I shall respond accordingly. Well, I wouldn't want you to think me unprofessional now, would I? I have something I would like to show you, truly, Rose, and it is certainly not necessary to sign it. How else would you know it's from me? I, I, I don't have time for this, Rose. I'm missing something. Uh, what in the unknown is this now? It's something new. new. I've been working on it for minutes. It's a little difficult to explain, so I think it may be better if I gave a little demonstration. Well, whose death clocks are those? How did you unlock them? Did, did you take my vessel key? I found it just lying around. Is that so? Around where? Your neck, when you fell asleep. <sighs> Before you get mad, we all know that death clocks emit an almost undetectable pulsation, right? And they pulsate at different speeds of regularity, like a heartbeat. Well? I was a little curious, so I did some testing. Turns out that death clocks that were generated at the same rotational position, regardless of cyclical period, pulsate at almost the exact same rate. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. You know not to tamper with another person's death clock. But it's not exact. I had to adjust them slightly so they're not out of phase. So I made this device. When you place two death clocks in it like this, it harnesses the Omega Meter's natural drawing power to synchronize their pulse. I call it the Death Clock Vibrational Matching Machine. Hmm. Still working on the name. Watch this. Yeah, funny, but it's time to stop all this and put the clocks back in their vessel so that we can both get back to work. Yes? Oh, good. Death, it vibrates. Exactly. Just as the tellers say that everything is connected by threads of time, so may those threads, I believe, connect some objects through space. Whatever I do to this clock will happen to that clock. They match. Though I think there may be something wrong with that one. There were some faded markings on the back. I couldn't Rose, really... Rose, this is... It's something. But I needn't inform you that this reeks of other thought. You know I cannot in good conscience allow it in the repository. 
Tear it down. But this could change everything. I thought if you it just It will saw change it. nothing. All that is is already known. You are a hard worker, Rose. It's what makes you valuable and will secure your place in death. But you are clever, too. And if you don't fix yourself, it will lead to your undoing. Might as well if anyone were to see this aberration. Then you don't understand. This means that we could Wait, change- Wait, that one's mine. You, you took my death clock? What were you thinking? I wasn't thinking anything. I found it just lying around. Around where? At your station, second floor from the bottom, just sitting inside your vessel. I always thought it strange you kept your vessel at your station instead of a chamber like everyone else's. Anyway, I needed a subject, so I had a little borrow. Then I found a clock that matched. Thought you'd be excited to see the results. I didn't look at the times on either. If that's what you're worried about, I wouldn't dare. You do not tamper with another person's death clock. I feel I have made that abund abundantly clear in your time here. You clearly gave no consideration as to what could have occurred and the damage that you could have unleashed. Reckless. I'm sorry. Yes, well. Let that be the last apology. Now this one. Stern, do I know this name? Doubtful. Teller Stern told me at Pragmatical Imbuement when I was little. Brilliant man, but strange. Funny you two have the same dawning time. Why is that funny? Same kind of face, same kind of getting mad at me. What? I don't. And how exactly is that? Hmm? I'm mad at you. I suppose I can, at times, be a bit curt. Grumpy. But it is only because I do care for you and your future. No one wants to become a nothing person. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Not to mention, we have a very important role here in the Great Clock, and it must be attended, attended to. Attended to with the we utmost concern. I apologize. Go on. You were just about to get to your favorite part. Hmm. Time is not about doing what you wish, thinking, Frivolous thoughts that bear no use whatsoever. It is to steal your mind to your life's appointed task and performing that task with precision to ensure the perpetuation of the Omega Meter to which you and I and everyone in Mechanosis bear a responsibility. Your very ascendancy depends upon it. Now please, put this Stern's clock back in its vessel and let's both get back to work. Of yes? course. Yeah. I won't bother you again. Good. Oh, that reminds me. What did we just talk about? Would you prefer I write you a letter? <sighs> what is it? The Omega Meter. What about it? It's acting funny. The last time I recorded a new rotation, it was off by just a smidge. No, impossible. It's true. The last rotation was slightly faster than the previous. It's minute, but it is there. Rose, then your observation is obviously an error. The Omega Meter is perfect. It does not change. You know this. But... Oh, thank death. Um, fetch, uh, uh, find me a proper chamber for this uh, new dawn clock while I'm, uh, while I'm gone, won't you? You know, a lot of folk in Mechanosis would be very pleased, impressed even with my little discovery. My, Rose, what a lovely revelation you've made, they'd say. Oh, you know me, I'd say. Always tinkering with a bit of this and a bit of that when I'm able. Sometimes I just stumble upon a fundamental truth concerning the nature of space and time. But you know how it is. Have to toss it all away lest your betters find out you've been other thinking. Wouldn't want to be left out of death when your clock starts to winter. Whenever that might be. But you know when that is, don't you? Hmm? When my clock will winter, do you know when that'll be, don't you? <clears throat> um, yes, as to you, don't play dumb. You're far too difficult not to have taken a peek. Not at all. I like surprises. Oh, yes. uh, find a proper chamber for this new dawn clock, please. Oh, a happy day for some darling pair. Mm. That's what you need. A sweet husband or wife to calm your disposition. A few tykes running around the repository. <laughs> Do you ever think about it much? Yeah. 
Of course not. What am I saying? <laughs> Remember that time triplets dawned in the city and almost jammed the clock hopper? What's wrong? Uh, I know this one. We were... Well, the moment has come quicker than I thought. Is that a... Yay, I know them. They're lovely, kind of know them. Or a... Ooh, my arch enemy, kind of know them. Are those my only two options? Well, then the first one, I suppose. Well, good for them. Assuming they pass, of course, and who doesn't. You don't seem happy. Why aren't you happy? I can't believe I just asked you. Um, I am. I, I am. I am. <clears throat> don't burn the place down while I'm gone, won't you, dear? Of course not, sir. I'll respectfully wait for you to return for that. Poor Rose. Your dawn came far too early. is my big metal spoon. Is it under the bed or with the linens this time? Oh, never mind. A fork can stir just as well. Just takes a bit more push and pull. You know, if you drew me a map, your little treasure hunts would be even more fun. Take into consideration, would you, love? Ah, <sighs> now, what happens next? Evil has been vanquished and the riches have been plundered. I suppose all that's left is the return home. I sound sad about that, don't I? But why should the return home be any less exciting than the first half of the journey? It doesn't have to be. Perhaps the true journey hasn't even begun. Oh, perhaps we need a dragon. Oh, oh, oh yes. How many times has a dragon ever not made things better? Never times, that's how many. And, and not too nice a dragon either. A perfectly even-tempered dragon for you. One with spectacles. Oh! A monocle? Two monocles. Hmm, does she speak? Oh, perhaps. Perhaps not. Perhaps yes, though. Ooh, of what does she speak? Secret things. True things. Oh, okay, let's review. In the beginning was chaos and fear, and from the depths an eruption of love and meaning. Time begins, a city is formed, an artist emerges. Artist? No, artist. Engineer? Inventor? Maker! Oh, maker? Maker, yes, of course, one who makes. A maker emerges, a child is born, a shaman. The maker loved the shaman, so they journeyed together, deep inside the tree of forgetitude, standing still upon the bridge of contradictiveness and burrowing far deep underground to the roots of revelationship. Twas there the pair battled the twin snakes of impermanence and won! And triumphant, they shared with one another the spoils of their victory. Silence and time, so that they may live and rest for all of ever and ever together. And then suddenly, because all the most exciting things happen when they happen suddenly, appears from the sky a, a mild-mannered, telepathic dragon with pink-spotted monocles. Maybe 
doesn't make sense, but it just feels right, doesn't it? Oh. Darling, time to hide. Quiet, love, like a chair. Sorry, you're too late. No. Maya, please don't. Perhaps my memory is poor, but were you always this short, or is this a new development? Because if it is, it's not very becoming. You should try to be taller. <clears throat> I um, do a lot of hunching, desk work, you know. Yes, and yet no hunch that coming here was a bad idea. All that hunching for nothing. Please make this graceful, Maya. Maya of Mechanosis. City within the Omega Meter of the Escapement District, Structure 439, Compartment 122. I hereby inform you that your death clock has begun the wintering process. Congratulations. Upon providing the acceptable answers given to the four trials, judged by the watcher in rotation, your vessel shall be unlocked and your death clock shall be given. Once in your possession, you shall be contacted by the shepherd who shall inform you of the knowledge of the passageway to death the land of forever bliss beyond time. Should you refuse or fail, you shall be made a nothing person and banished to the wheel of silence for all of eternity. Do you have any questions? Right. Um, <clears throat> trial one, what are you for? Oh, so personal right away. Well, truth, I suppose. Or maybe I'm for that pleasant sensation when you close your eyes and Put your finger right here and you feel as if every vibration of your being is returning to a single point. Maya. You don't ask an honest question, but you're annoyed when you receive an honest answer. Strange. Maya, please, you know how this must go. I can't believe you never told me. But I, I have nothing to tell you. I, I didn't know. Being the watcher is a great burden, and, and, and it would have been highly unethical uh, to... <laughs> yes, it, it makes sense. So is that why you left? B because you knew we had no future together. But that had nothing to do with anything, and you know it. We could have had a future together. In death, I am patient. I'll answer your questions, but I won't listen to you lie to me. What difference would knowing the truth make now? It's the only thing that makes a difference now. I left because you were ill. You believed untrue things, <laughs> illogical things. You, you attempted to subvert the order of mechanosis, spreading your illness throughout the city before you were clinically set back. And although you may have fooled others, I knew even after your setback that you still harbored thoughts, secret thoughts. I couldn't stand to watch it, I pitied you. There's no space left for love. Liar! Excuse me? You left because you love me, and you couldn't stand it. You need suffering in your world for it to make sense, Peter. Trial one, what are you for? To serve. Who? No one. What? The Omega Meter. Why? Because the Omega Meter must be maintained to ensure the steady and continuous flow of time. Trial two, when is time? Always. Direction? Forward. Where? The omega meter. Why? Because the omega meter is that which creates all time, for time may not create itself, and time exists and is generated only within the omega meter. Supposedly. No, we're not doing this. Doing what? You know what? What? All that is is already known. Is it? 
damn it, Maya, can't you see that I'm trying to save you? <coughs> Bro, I I'm aware of that. Then why? Why are you making this so difficult? Can't you just act like a person? Did the Omega Man, the great clock, the maker of all time, make itself? No. There is no beginning to the Omega Meter. It always is, was, and will be. How? If the Omega Meter truly has no beginning, but created all time that exists, then it is itself time that does not create itself, is it not? And all time that does not create itself is, according to you, created only by the Omega Meter. Uh, therefore, if that's true, this then that thought. means <laughs> the Omega Meter must have created itself. Oh, it must oh. have a beginning, which you claim is not true. It, it doesn't make sense. And it, it must have been created by someone, uh, which means that the Omega Meter does, <laughs> time does exist beyond the Omega Meter. There's something wholly outside of ourselves. A and when we ascend... Don't say it. We are no longer. And to spend your life waiting for the no longer? That is the true sick, Peter. There can be more than waiting, and you know it. Trial three, why do you serve? To reap. What? Liberation. From? The Omega Meter. Why? Because the Omega Meter is that which gives and takes. To live is to maintain it. To ascend is to escape it, which may only be earned through service of it. Last trial. What is not the Omega Meter? Nothing. How'd I do? Maya of Mechanosis, city within the Omega Meter of the Escapement District, structure 439, compartment 122. I hereby inform you that your vessel shall be unlocked and your death clock relinquished. Your time in Mechanosis is over. Eternity upon the face of the Omega Meter, the land of forever bliss, death awaits. You shall soon be contacted by the shepherd who shall inform you of the knowledge of the passageway to death. <sighs> Mechanosis, thanks you for your service. What was that? What was what? Stop! It's just a loud closet! What is this? This is Jonah. Wait, then how do I not know you have a son? I, I, I should have seen his death clock appear in the repository. <laughs> well, when he was born, I waited for documentation about his death clock's arrival, and it just what? never came. No, 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 no. No one is born in mechanosis without the generation of a death clock. The Omega Meter is it's perfect. It's perfect, yes. That which gives and takes. Funny that, right? Shaman and, and, and maker, silence and time, Maya, have you learned nothing? It's all true. No, no heresy. Fabricated thoughts have no place in mechanosis. These are lies. Not lies, truth. <sighs> Just a different kind of truth. A, a truth about Jonah. A, about who, not what. And this? Jonah can draw stars from the sky. What in the unknown are stars? No, 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 it's, it's contraband. It, 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 it's pure other thought. I, I have to record the positive. Oh, oh, Jonah is pure other thought. That's why I never told you. Please, Peter, if you ever love me, don't. Goodbye, Maya. Watcher. I have no family. They've all ascended or no longer speak to me. I have no one to watch Jonah. I'm not asking you to take care for him. I know that's beyond your abilities. But you're... I can't find him a proper home now. 
Please, Peter. Is he mine? What difference would knowing the truth make now? I'll do what I can when I make time. making tea. She hums a song of safe. I like the sound of the water into the pot. A dust of smoke escapes the fire. I like how the light drips through, painting wild shadows on the wall. I make this feeling last forever with my hands. Mother draws too. She dances and sings and kisses the top of my head. Mother is happy. Her happy is a deep indigo with changing, smooth shapes of yellow. Something different now. A knocking sound from outside. This is new. I don't like it. Mother's indigo drips to maroon with flecks of silver. And the silver is hard and jagged, moving fast and unpredictable. Mother is scared. I am scared because Mother is scared. She takes me to the dark and tries to be brave for me, but I see her. And I am quiet, like a chair. Something's inside the house now, a burning orange like fire. A voice, deep and sad. And the talking is long. Colors fill everywhere and they change fast. It's hard to see. But I remember my new star. I draw it from the shelf, hiding under the linens. The metal is smooth and cool. I like how it feels upon my face. I'm just shouting. The colors blend now. A solid hot purple. And then, quiet. Reds and blues begin dissolving apart. It's clear to see what belongs to whom again. I try to help mother return to her indigo and yellow with my new star. The thing breaks into my dark. I see it, man-shaped but hollow, like an empty bookcase. Amber and green stabs at me, it, it hurts. The home is covered in it. Mother is maroon and gray again. Fear and loneliness. The th the thing takes my forever in its claws. I understand now. The thing is not a man, but a beast, destroying everything. I hate it. Mother wants something. The beast doesn't want to give it. Mother wins, but she's still scared. The, the home is just me and mother again. But her indigo and yellow doesn't return. A sickly pink and brass is all that's left. Slow and heavy. I worry that I'll never see her indigo and yellow again. And the inner workings of the great clock are what make up the city itself. Beyond this room, what do you see, Jonah? The buffer springs, the fly tension plate, the chime wheel, all necessary components that must be maintained by humankind. In fact, the very structure you're being pulled in right now is a smaller part of the release mechanism. High above us is the underside of the face, death. With each tick of the hands above, the omega meter blesses us with enough elastic energy to generate light. And in the repository, where our death clocks are kept safe, there is a perfect representation of the Omega Meter, an emblem. It is said to be beautiful. 
the Omega Meter, ticking forever forward in perfect, harmonious regularity, generating all time that exists, shelters us from the absolute timelessness and nothing that exists beyond the great clock. And when our death clocks winter, and we have proven ourselves clean of other thought, all reward awaits. Eternity atop the face, death, forever bliss. <clears throat> what? Keller Stern? Yes, do I know you? Yes, uh, uh, no, I mean no. I am Peter, watcher from the repository. I'm here for the boy. Yes, <laughs> of course. I was informed of the situation. Forgive my poor memory. Such a fickle thing. It is an honor to be in your presence, sir. May we all rejoice for the ascension of Jonah's dear mother. Where are the other children? The what? Well, it's been some distance, but when I was in pragmatical imbuement as a child, there were others besides myself being told, and, and no one was constrained. His mother didn't tell you. Well, his mother told me only the time and place to retrieve him. Jonah is a uh, difficult child, hmm. He's prone to fits. For the safety of the other students, it was decided that this situation would be best for all. Decided by whom? Me, sir. And his mother was approving of this? Would it matter? And that had nothing to do with his mother's history. Sir, as a teller, even if I was aware of such gossip, that information would never influence my feelings for one of my listeners. Mm. Not even Jonah. Besides, this private telling is for the benefit of him as well. The boy is weak-minded. The other thought pervades him throughout. Mm. At his current pace, he will never succeed the four trials and receive his death clock when his time comes. Mm. I couldn't bear to think that the boy had become a nothing person, knowing that I could have prevented it. I'm trying to save him. Mm. I see. Well, I am certainly not the expert on the finer art of telling. I suppose, then, this must be a suitable solution. Good work, Teller Stern. Release him. <clears throat> You, come with me. <clears throat> well, wh why aren't you doing anything? Wh why isn't he doing anything? If I had to guess, Watcher, I'd say the boy is waiting for his mother to retrieve him. Jonah has difficulty understanding simple things. <sighs> uh, your mother has ascended. She will no longer care for you. You are to come with me, and I will find you a new family. Now let's go. Oh, stop, dear. Hey, stop this. Hey, enough. Uh, Relax. I, he's getting other thought all over it. What, tell her, Stern, make him stop. What is he doing? Like I said, sir, the boy is rabid, unpredictable, violent, with no cause or reason. And you, Maya. You will comply. Have a pleasant day. Good luck. A dust of smoke escapes the fire. I like how the light drips through, painting wild shadows on the wall. You, uh, you missed one. Yeah. 
You know, I got that from Rose when she first started here. She always thought it was hideous. <laughs> the proof is undeniable. I know your feelings on the matter, but if you would just look at these numbers, you'll see that the omega meter is speeding up. Have I interrupted something? Oh, uh, not at all, Rose. You see, Jonah and I were here were simply, um, oh, <laughs> part of my manners. Say hello, Jonah. Yeah, good boy. Uh, Jonah and I here were simply engaging in a spirited yet friendly philosophical discourse concerning the best practices of socially expected behavior. You see. I, for one, believe that one must exercise their finest efforts toward order and civility, lest Mechanosis herself descend into chaos. But Jonah here, <laughs> Jonah has made a very compelling argument pertaining to the merits of societal entropy. Isn't that right, Jonah? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's very nice to meet you, Jonah. And Jonah is... The son of the woman whose clock I delivered yesterday. Contraband from the site. Recording the positive, please. He's in my care for now, until I can find him a proper home. That's very compassionate of you, sir. Mm. And a bit out of character, if you don't mind me saying. I blame you. She must have been very special. Yeah, well, I blame you entirely for this. How's that now? For calling me grumpy. Ah, struck a nerve, did I? Mm. I didn't know you were so sensitive. Now that I know I possess this power, I'll be sure to use it more often. I think I could do a lot of good. I need to get rid of him. <laughs> you need to look at this. No, no, I, I refuse to placate the delusions of others. The omega meter is perfect. Its rate is constant. It does not change. If you need someone to correct your errors in arithmetic, then find a tutor. I have more pressing matters to attend to now. Yeah. My arithmetic is what's perfect. Yeah. It's the omega meter that needs inspection. And your unwillingness to acknowledge the truth is what's bordering on delusion here. But you may have a point. If you insist on being so stubborn, perhaps I will find someone who will believe me. Here, you deposit the contraband. Rose! Uh, <clears throat> uh, that man, uh, Stern, the one from your little magic trick. Experiment? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I met him today because of, well, in spite of his general ineptitude, it, it appears that he might be knowledgeable pertaining to the inner workings of the Omega Meter. Maybe he can help. Thank you. Perhaps you'll believe him when he tells you that you're wrong. father made this. The mechanism that uh, drives a little man to dance, or did, well, it's, it's similar to how the omega meter is powered, except you don't need half of mechanosis to make it work. You would just, um, well, you would just wind up a string on this part and, and pull, and, and he would, um, well, well. You see, he gave this to me when I was a boy. He's much younger than you, in fact. Um, insisted that his creation did not fall under the criteria of other thought. Oh, no, no, no. For it was not made for pleasure. It was a tool to introduce his son to the concepts of simple mechanical functions, to prepare him for the life as his successor. If you hadn't destroyed it, I might show you how he dances. It's, uh, it's utterly delightful. It's not a simple machine either, I, I understand that now. How much care must it have taken to create something so marvelous, so full of life, for it to only be a tool? Isn't that strange? <laughs> well, I knew I wouldn't be able to keep it. When I got older and its function no longer applicable to me, it would need to be destroyed. I wept, and I begged for it not to be so. I tried to hide it from him, but he took it from me. My dancing man. Some cycles later, once Father had ascended, I, I rediscovered my old friend amongst a collection of his belongings. Why would he have kept it? 
absolutely maddening. Well, <clears throat> that will certainly be the first thing that I ask Father when I see him in death. I suppose, Jonah, you've, uh, well, you, you finished what he started long ago. You've probably done me a great favor. That's a death clock. It's, it, it's wintering. By the 9 o'clock wing, by the sound of it, I need to attend to it. Stay here. Don't, don't touch anything. Excuse me? What? Teller Stern? Yes, do I know you? You did once. I was a listener of yours some cycles ago. What are you for? To serve. Whom? No one. What? The Omega Meter. Why? Because the Omega Meter must be maintained to ensure the continuous and steady flow of time. It's good to see that my telling has done some good. What do you want? Teller Stern. You know more about the Omega Meter than anyone in Mechanosis. Is it possible for the Omega Meter to change? To tick faster or slower than normal? Don't be absurd, girl. The Omega Meter is perfect. Nothing ever changes. Oh, of course, Teller. I wasn't implying anything in I, I remember you now, Rose. My most gifted listener. Though far too clever for your own good. I don't know why you've come here or what it is that you want. But you're very asking such a question is bordering on other thought. Good day. <clears throat> Teller, I work in the repository now, helping the watcher. What if, hypothetically, I were to have stumbled upon some contraband recently. Some documents claiming evidence, false evidence, of course, that the Omega Meter is speeding up. Well, then the author of such fabrications would be subject to a most terrible punishment. Absolutely. A horrific, unspeakable punishment. They'd probably even be set back. I can hardly stand to think of it. Perhaps even... Banishment to the Wheel of Silence. How dreadful. Indeed. I suppose the only way to ensure justice would be to make a solid case against them. Pouring through their work, proving them wrong, making sure that no one in Mechanosis questioned the truth ever again. Is that the uh, contraband? Oh, this? Yeah. But it takes someone far smarter than me to crack this one. I'll probably end up having to burn it all. Let the violator go free. Oh well. Like this part, it looks right to me, even though I know it's not, because that would be impossible, but I can't prove why it's not right. Give me that. <laughs> How inelegant. What a mess. It would be far more effective to utilize the Omega Meter's natural drawing power to calculate its precise rate of tick. I trust you recall my telling on drawing power. Of course. The Omega Meter desires order over entropy. It is the natural inclination of all ordered bodies to be drawn to the inner workings, thereby establishing formal orientations. Drawing power is why we walk on the base and not float. Exactly. That's brilliant. Perhaps if I were able to control the Omega Meter's drawing power, I can record more substantial changes. What was that? Speak up, girl. The Death Clock Vibrational Matching Machine. The what now? Uh, thanks for everything, Teller Stern. Good luck with your 
just board cleaning. Wait. You clearly are not intellectually equipped for such an important undertaking by yourself. I shall allow you to assist me in my quest for justice. Teller Stern, do you trust me? Not at all. Never touch me. To the repository, then. To the repository. Jonah! Where is it? Where is it? You hit it somewhere. It's here somewhere. I, I know it. I'll find it. You hit it. You're ill. You're ill just like your mother. End it all! You missed the one. He took my death clock. I don't know how. I don't know where. He, he, he unlocked my, 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 my vessel. It, I, I have my key right here. It doesn't make any sense. Breathe, child. In the scent of sweet. Out. Extinguish the flame. Now. Where are you? I'm in my... Uh, I'm in Maya's compartment, 122. Good. And, um, who am I? You're the shepherd. And why are you seeing me? Because he didn't take my death clock, did he? He's destroyed it. You're to make me a nothing person. False. I'm here to make you a deal. Remarkable technology. Truly fascinating. It's just a box. You open it with a key. Not just a box. A vessel. I haven't seen one since I was a boy. And why is the watcher's death clock not inside of it? I told you, I don't know. And where did the watcher and Jonah get off to anyways? I don't know. And this machine, you say it's discovered contraband as well? Huh? Uh, yeah, sure. I see. Are you almost finished? Tell you, sir! Yes? I could use some assistance, please. Can you jiggle the... Well, I tried to... Uh, the other one, on the left? That's it! That's it! Oh, that's it, sir, you did it! <laughs> oh, I knew bringing you wasn't a mistake. Yes. Well, what do we do now? We watch and wait, I suppose. I redirected the uh, elastic flow of the omega meter's elastic flow of energy to the entire repository, tuning it like a giant antenna. We should be able to control the omega meter's drawing power now. I'm only raising it just a hair, just to make the changes in time more visible. I mean, proving that time hasn't changed. And if the power were to increase any higher? Theoretically, I suppose it would draw from the great beyond. Something from nothingness. Impossible, right? Of course. Impossible. It would have to be something wholly outside of ourselves, of which there is. Nothing, no. of course. You are aware. That the omega meter is accelerating, yes? Uh, <clears throat> I um, had my suspicions. Uh, I, I tried telling my assistant at the repository, but she wouldn't believe me. She's, she's very stubborn, that one. Uh huh. And do you know why is it happening? No. No, do I. But the implications are dire. And I believe the answer lies with the boy. For he has no death clock, but that you are aware, watcher. 
uh, death clocks and the omega meters, they're connected. Linked intimately, a symbiotic relationship. Biotemporal mechanism, a perfect circle. And a rift in the circle. I could... know not why this boy has no clock, but without it, his presence in mechanosis will continue to disrupt the delicate balance which must be maintained. He belongs elsewhere. In death. A heart of death, to be precise. Ah, something you don't know, Watcher. Tell me. Why do I wait for one to possess their death clock before granting them passage? I, I don't know. Then listen. Not all death is bliss. The heart, yes. But the heart is protected by dangers to thwart those who would attempt to gain entry before their time. For when a death clock begins to winter, the heart begins to draw it closer. This is this drawing power to traverse the previous depth of the puzzle, which is death. Without the death clock, one would remain forever lost. You have to tell me where my death clock is. Mm. Please, I, I, I'll do anything. As I said, a deal. The boy must enter the heart, and he requires a guide. Well, it can't be me. You just said that that's impossible within our clocks. Why can't it be you? It's not impossible or challenging. And no, it cannot be me. I have not left the heart for many cycles. I, I do not believe I'm any longer capable. You don't think I'm here in the flesh, do you? But then how? Think, Peter. How is it that the boy gained entry for your death clock? I, I don't know. I, I left him for a second. And when I returned, my, my vessel wasn't locked and he was gone. Nothing else. Before that, he had done something strange. He, he had put his hand here. I, I felt something. I, I don't know what. Curious. And before that moment of strangeness, were you feeling something unusual? Heightened sense of joy, sadness, anger? No. No, there was nothing. Neither of you can reach the heart alone. There must be trust. It may make the singular difference between success and the end of mechanosis. All right, and if I can somehow get him into the heart? He shall remain there, where he belongs. Uh, you were to find him a family, were you not? What's best then, to reunite him with his mother, and then I shall reveal the location of your death clock. All right, so what, if I get him into the heart, what's to stop me from staying? <laughs> How curious a thought even to a curve watcher. The same dilemma that prevents the boy to stay in mechanosis. It's not the proper time. There would be consequences. Mother! I'm awake. This would go a lot faster if you helped, you know. This place is quite untidy, you know. I already told you that Jonah... Never mind. What is this? Uh, that's just some contraband Peter seized. I have to deposit it. Later. The Maker and the Shaman. Curious. Why is that curious? It recalls something from long ago. The trials of the Maker and the Shaman was a set of uh, heretical lies pertaining to the supposed origin of the Omega Meter. But the Omega Meter has no origin. It always was, is, and will be. Of course. Hence the heretical part. The claim being that the two had discovered the secrets of time and silence, as if there is such a thing, and gifted it to the once uncivilized humankind, therefore granting them the knowledge to build the city of Mechanosis, the Omega Meter, even death, freeing them from nothingness. 
filthy, punishable nonsense. The author must have been aware of the lies, must have been trying to revive them for some reason. Perhaps. Though all replicas of the lies were found and burned long ago. I'm only aware of them myself because I'm, well, very old, Rose. It's not a good idea to leave these here. I'll go deposit them now. Hmm. Interesting. Oh dear. What are you doing here, Rose? And what about the... Oh. Oh, no. No, 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 no! This can't mean what I think it means. Rose! You have your charge. When you awaken, you will find yourself and the boy on the edge of death. Wait, are you, are you implying that I'm somehow asleep now? Sleep awake. Which truth would make this easier for you? <sighs> Goodbye, Watcher. Wait! How did you become the Shepherd? How did you become the Watcher? Uh, my father. I was born into it. <laughs> I was decreed as such by someone I loved a long time ago. But time is cyclical in nature, Peter. Just as the hand of the Omega Meter returns to 12 to begin again, so are we blessed to relieve our failures forever. You must succeed. Oh, I'll do what I can. When I make... Tell her, Stern! I went to put the contraband away. I tried a new cabinet I've never used before. Wanted to remember where I put it, thought it was empty and found this. Chaos and fear, tree of forgetitude, silence and time. It's the same lies. And not just the same lies, the exact same lies. Same words, same handwriting. Some of these pages are ancient, turning to dust. You lied to me. What? No, I... <sighs> Your charts are... You haven't been stumbling upon contraband. You've been creating it. What are you thinking? I should report you immediately. Tell her, listen to me. I know it's hard to believe, but the Omega Meter is accelerating. You're... I, 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 I knew it was a risk, but I knew if I could show you, prove it to you, anyone, then, then maybe we could stop it. Your charts are impressive, but not perfect. All I did was account for the discrepancy caused by the death clock loss. Not many know that the death clocks and the Omega Meter are intrinsically linked. So... You believe me? Vessels are only supposed to be opened once. When they winter, yes. But the Watchers... Look. The keyhole. It's scratched and worn. It must have been opened a thousand times. I'm not saying you're right. But if you were, the only thing that would make any sense, the only thing that would cause a disturbance in the Omega Meter... Peter is stealing time! <laughs>